we're focusing on Microsoft, which is a winner today after its quarterly report. In fact, it's at the highest levels and seeing the largest percentage increase since July. Our panel is ready to take a look at Microsoft, and here we go. Jason Ware, CIO at Albion Financial Group, and Dan Romanoff, equity analyst at Morningstar. Thank you both for being here. Jason, I'll start with you. Uh, were, were you really impressed by Microsoft? Was it what you expected? Yeah, hi, Nicole, good to be with you. So I would say, yeah, we were impressed. I mean, it's a good way to kick off fiscal 24 for Microsoft. I think Azure was the star of the show. Um, their devices business seems to be perhaps bottoming, um, which I think was a good sign. If you look at uh, just really the core trends uh, across productivity, across intelligent cloud, and again, that Azure number, uh, Microsoft really needed to print a solid performance in cloud in order to justify the run in the stock this year to justify that 32 multiple trading at 11 times revenue as well. And they got it. Um, after four quarters of sequential decline in Azure, uh, we saw an uptick. And I think that was uh, good enough for investors and we were pleased with the report. I mean, it's such a different it's such a different story, a different direction than what we're seeing, for example, from Alphabet. Um, there are people who are saying that Microsoft is it. I mean, in the, the fact that they really were the leaders when it came to AI and Chat GPT. Dan, um, tell me your thoughts. Uh, well, so first, thanks for having me. And um, yeah, I agree that Microsoft put up a good quarter. Uh, as far as Microsoft being the only game in town for AI, I don't, I don't think that's quite true. I think the uh, right now they're sort of well positioned and have an early lead, but I don't think that necessarily means they squeeze everyone out. So if you want something uh, that is working and has like high profile wins, yes, Microsoft is sort of the only answer in the immediate term. But, you know, over the next year or so, I expect that Google will, will look a lot better and, and Amazon, of course, is uh, working diligently in this area. So. I think there's a number of options. Right, understood. Where do you have this one rated? As, as I see, by the way, uh, Barclays maintains the overweight, Goldman Sachs was positive, Wedbush, re, uh, you know, outperformed. So we are seeing a lot of positive comments from the analysts today. Dan, what, what do you say in your uh, note? I have it here, but what was the takeaway from your note today? Yeah, I think the big headline is that the Azure number was nicely ahead this quarter and uh, the guidance for Azure was also nicely ahead for the rest of the year as well. So they're looking for strength. I mean, I see loosely 10% upside to our uh, fair value estimate. Uh, so I don't think that valuation is a layup, but I also think that Microsoft is pretty easy to own here and what is still a choppy environment what, with uh, political uncertainty and yeah. rising rates. And you have all these sort of high profile headline wins for uh, Microsoft that just makes it uh, pretty attractive in my opinion. Yeah, obviously we saw the Azure numbers up, as you used the word earlier, impressive, Jason, um, across the board, right, for the numbers. But when you think about Microsoft, how do we break it down now? Is this a cloud business? What happens to the PC business? How do you perceive this company and where do you think this stock is headed? Yep, great question. So the, the business is really segmented into three main areas. Cloud, really intelligent cloud, that Microsoft calls an intelligent cloud, that's Azure, that's SQL Server, that's a couple of other businesses. That is about 40 to 42% of their overall revenue. The second biggest business is their productivity. That's gonna be 365, that's gonna be LinkedIn, that's gonna be Dynamics, that's about a third of revenue. And then the remainder of revenue is their personal computing, which is gonna be Windows, it's gonna be their gaming, which by the way, they're buying Activision Blizzard for 69 billion, and that's gonna be part of that division. And then um, it's it's uh, it's their devices. So you know, that's the way that we think about Microsoft is broken down in that regard. And if you go back five years ago, cloud was not the largest business, and cloud is now the largest business because that's where the growth has really been coming from. So as we think about the stock over the next five years, Satya Nadella has to do pretty much what he's done over the last five years, which is continue to grow Azure Cloud. And I think the good news is, is that AI workloads is really the new um, growth story in cloud. Cloud was moderating. It should moderate. You can't grow at 50, 60 percent forever. If we go back 12 months ago, cloud was growing almost 50 percent. And it's, like I said, been moderating for four straight quarters. So seeing this uptick, I think, is impressive. And I think we need to continue to see cloud cloud work within the context of AI in particular. And oh, by the way, one other point I'll make, we're going to start seeing the monthlies go up for things like Copilot, which I think is an additional AI tailwind for the Microsoft story. So we still like it. I agree with Dan. The valuation is a bit 
uh, is a bit high. Um, and we think that uh, over the next few years, it's really an earnings growth story. And if they can continue to compound earnings in a mid-teens kind of fashion, uh, we're, we're happy with that as investors. Yeah, understood. And Dan, I mean, where do you see the other names? If, if Microsoft's definitely a name you like, are there takeaways here that could help some of the others? Which of the others are your favorites? I think if you just extend this to broader software, it's a good start for the earnings season. Microsoft obviously has a pulse on demand for enterprise and SMB. Uh, and really everything was looking pretty good. Office uh, from an enterprise standpoint was strong. Uh, new users for SMB though were very strong in Office as well. So uh, I think for uh, you get another bellwether tonight in ServiceNow uh, and Amazon on Thursday sort of um, stretching into more public cloud names. So, I think that you're off to a good start. Uh, you know, I do like Microsoft. Uh, ServiceNow is sort of always on the, the top of my list. So uh, that's a name I expect good things from tonight, but they're really well positioned longer term and in excellent competitive position. Uh, so, so I think that there are, again, options, but um, the one we have on the table here is Microsoft. They're really well positioned in AI and public cloud, and I think those are the two big areas that investors get excited about. And they really knocked it out of the park last night uh, in, in both of those fronts. And Jason, just final few seconds left, quickly. Other names that you like here? Yeah, I mean, you know, we like Alphabet. We've, we've owned Alphabet for over a decade, and we think the pullback here is viable. The stock's trading at 21 times forward earnings. This is still a company that is pretty much part of the digital fabric of our lives over the next decade. They are very much AI first. We think these pullback here is an overreaction. So Alphabet is one that you should have in the portfolio as well. All right, Jason Ware, Dan Romanoff, thank you both for being with us today. Really appreciate a look there at Microsoft, which is certainly on the upside after its quarterly report.